Jolly Rancher gummies are one of my favorite candies out there. I normally buy these locally at Walmart, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I don't want to shop there and have to resort to find my sugarly fix online. I have not only bought them at Walmart, but Hershey World itself, as I am a couple hundred miles away from Hershey. The ones that Hershey World were obviously the best. I was super stoked when I found this five pound bag of gummies on Amazon. I absolutely love Jolly Rancher gummies and was it's such a huge bag would last me for weeks and months. Upon my very first bite though, I hate to say it, these are not the same gummies. The ones I normally buy at Walmart as well as the ones I buy from Hershey World itself, they are thicker and softer in texture. You could squeeze them and they'd retake their shape. These ones, they are very flat and very chewy and almost resembling the chewiness of Swedish fish, a little chewier than that. Normal Jolly Ranchers are not like this at all. They have the kind of the give to them. They don't even taste the same. The normal ones are a huge flavor burst. Something is definitely off about this five pound bag of Jolly Rancher candies. Someone who eats these all the time, who's had them from Hershey Worlds, I know the difference. I'm pretty disappointed right now. I paid for a five pound bag of Jolly Rancher gummies. This feels like a knockoff, yet it has the Hershey fish info on the label, but this definitely isn't right. They have a consumer hotline number and I think I'm gonna give them a call. Maybe these bulk bags are made using a different or cheaper method. I can't say I would recommend these to anyone because these are not the right thing. Two stars. Okay, roll credits. Hi, welcome back to Live in the Dark with Video Drew, starring me, Video Drew. This is our weekly nighttime talk show where we talk about celebrity news, movie news, we interview guests, we play games, and and there's uh, there's a crow host who's a boy that used to be a crow. That's my crow host, Danny. Bring him on. That Hi, Danny. Very long review. I didn't write it. I didn't. I don't care about gummies. I just thought. I just thought it was a good one. Don't you like gummies? No. Well, mm, no. I'm more of like a Werther's, uh, Werther's sugar-free Werther's person, like an old grandma, like with my fake teeth. Danny, <laughs> do you have fake teeth? No, but you have headphones in, Danny. Because I see headphones, but I'm hearing an echo. That's very strange. It might be me. There we go. No. That's better. That's better. Yay. Okay. Hi, guys. Something from StreamYards. Hey. Yeah. So problem. welcome to Live in the Dark with Video Drew. I have my stream. Oh, wow. I don't have my StreamYard stuff open. Wow. I'm not doing very well today. But I'm very excited about the guests we have on tonight. But let me put up the overlay. Boom. Guys, Streamlabs is open. That's streamlabs.com backslash video Drew. Um, and that's me on the bottom with my hair being shorter. Um, and that's all my info and all this stuff that's great about me. You can follow me everywhere. Danny, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I was working on bias towards cinema. Yeah, you're working on cinema bias. Well, that's that. That's not this. That's not this show. Wait, it's not. Nope. We're gonna move our brains over. So I know last week we had a little bit of uh, an issue. Well, it wasn't an issue, but you hit on my sister uh, during the show. So we're gonna. Uh, we're going to not do that this week because we have a very special guest and we're actually going to do things a little differently than normal because this guest is so very special and because uh, I just like her so much and she's great and like I don't care what my therapist would have thought about this one way or another. Uh, we're going to bring her on and just have her do the new segment and then the entire show with us. And like we'll see about whether or not uh, there's still like a place for you in this. Why I feel I'm being punished for something. Anyway, guys, Beth May is here. Ooh. Yay. Hello, Beth. Wow, I'm hard and unwrap me because I'm a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good to have you on, Beth. Uh, congratulations as in being my friend. I, I it feels good, you know. I uh, it feels really good. I'd like to accept this friendship on behalf of everyone who is not my friend. Yeah, and which is which is like literally everyone else in the world. I'm I am only allowed to have one friend at one time. That's okay. Cool. That sounds healthy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Why so many friends, right? Yeah, enough, Danny. 
Uh, anyway, this is a part of the show where we're going to talk about um, just enough, Danny. Like we're going to talk about movie news, which is like a big part of all our worlds and is a big part of television in general. Uh, late night shows, they always do um, the monologue part, which I just did. Then they talk about news and they like riff on it. So we're going to do that part. Okay. And then later comes the later parts. Okay. Okay. Uh, Danny, you want to read? Godzilla vs. Kong release date moves ahead two months. The legendary monsters will face off on March 26th instead of 2021 20, in Kyrtis and on the streaming service HBO Max. Well, this is great news. Uh, Stand Up Blizzard uh, versus Donkey Kong. Uh, I've been looking forward to this movie for a long time and I didn't know that they were coming. I didn't know it was coming out earlier. I don't know why they need to hang out necessarily, but. And I don't know who would win. So I guess that's why I'd see the movie. That's a great pitch. Yeah, I just, I guess I just don't care about this one. Yeah. I know that like the news, you know, I'm supposed to be reacting to it and stuff like that. I've just like really lost track of how many Godzilla and King Kong movies there are. There, There's none. This is the first one. I mean, like in general, there's like a million Godzilla and like 20 to 30 King Kongs. Okay. At any given time. At any given time out in the universe, it's always like dying and exploding like stars. There's like always, you know, a bunch of things happening, but they're That's usually. Cool. I, I just think like bring back more Matthew Broderick and I am good to go. Wow. Really? You're a fan of, you're a fan of that one. I, I watched half of it a few months ago. Um, I have seen it before all the way through, but I did watch half of it and that's, um, uh, that's news. So I did it backwards. Now here's the news, Beth May, is a couple months ago, I did this backwards where I started with Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and then just worked my way backwards. And so I thought Millie Bobby Brown was a big part of the franchise. It turns out her, she just showed up one day. Like her family, yeah. they just like assume, they, you just assume that they're a big, big part of it because they start the story and it's about them. Sorry, I need yeah. to put in my own headphones. I like Brian Cranston. He was in the other one. And Not he died. Yeah, he died really quickly. Yeah, and he was yeah. with that was the one with Ayla, Aaron uh, Aaron uh, Taylor Johnson, right? Yeah. Yes, he was in it, and weirdly enough, uh, he was also married to Elizabeth Olsen in it, which is weird because they're brother and sister in another movie. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the not the X Men, the other ones where they are the Wandavision people. Anyway, uh, I really like this uh, franchise. It's almost as good as Planet of the Apes, I guess. Uh, but none of them are played by Andy Circus. And yeah, next news. Good job, news. Next news, please. Next news. Come on, Sean. Ethan Hawk joins Moon Knight series at Disney Plus. The exact details of Hawk character are being kept under wraps, but he's reportedly set to play the show's lead villain. So. Oh. So here's what you do, guys. You just what you do is you Google Moon Knight and you figure out who the villain on that on that comic book series is, and then you'll know who Ethan Hawke's character is. <laughs> it's not really it's not doing a really good job keeping it under wraps. You just I can do it right now. Siri, hey Siri, hey Siri. Oh Jesus! Who's the bad guy in Who's the bad guy? How, who's the bad guy in Moon Knight? I found this on the web for who is the bad oh my guy. God, that's sexy, Siri. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. So the, the bad guy is uh, Ethan Hawke. Does that sound right? <laughs> yeah. So <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I I guess this is bad news for the good Lord Bird then. Not that we ever thought that it was getting renewed, but uh, <laughs> yeah. um, no. I'm, I love I love Ethan Hawke. I'll watch him in anything. I watched I watched him in this one that I have to say I was very upset in because I thought it was going to be um, a horror film. It was called First First Revenant or First Reform. First Reformed, love First Reformed. Oh, okay, love maybe I would have loved it if if someone had told me this is not going to be a horror movie. It's going to be a really really sad movie about like a, a eco terrorist yeah. who's also a priest. Because like that movie just like bummed me out and also made me not scared, but it kind of scared because I kept waiting for something scary to happen. There was they, like drink bleach. Uh, sorry, I'm like derailing already, but that happened to me with Manchester by the Sea actually because somebody <laughs> I I had, like not really heard anything about it, and I was mentioning, oh, I might go see Manchester by the Sea because I've heard it's really good, but I haven't heard anything about it. And then my coworker was like, oh, that's the one where you like like uh, lights his family on fire, right? And I was like, it is. And then he I does was, white, white, white. <laughs> is that what happens in Manchester by the Sea? 
but it's like an accident. Like, so I'm, I'm literally thinking I'm going in there to watch like the unraveling of a psyche as like somebody like turns into a monster who lights their family on fire. But no, it's like an accident. So it's like, uh, it was oh, just a okay. movie about depression and grief, but I was thinking it was going to be a cool serial killer movie. So. so is that, but like, is that what happens in Manchester by the Sea? It starts out and he's just killed his family in a fire? Basically, yeah. What's the rest of the movie? Because that seems like that should be the movie. It feels like they focus on the wrong part of the, this guy's life. <laughs> well, he's like, like that's the part like of the movie. Son back or something, and then uh, um, it's that one kid actor from from Ben is he's not a kid actor anymore. He's just a young Lucas actor. Hedges. Lucas yeah. Hedges. Were you gonna say Ben is back? Were you gonna say yeah, Ben is back? I was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I know everything about that movie. Uh, mostly though, who the two main actors are. Because I had to answer once correctly in a question. That'd be a great movie to be like the number one fan of. World's <laughs> number one Ben is Back fan. You know what? I think I've got my bit for next season because I, I have correctly answered a Ben is Back question. I think next season it's just I'm going to be the Ben is Back person. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Justin Hamilton. Hey, Nerd Chronic. I see everybody. Hey, Brandy. See the comments. Yeah, Justin Justin has a thing for Ethan Hawke. Who does oh, yeah? Interesting. He's not my, my lawyer. That's the other guy. Well, when Justin's on this show, then we can talk about Justin's feelings about Ethan Hawke. Okay, so next news. Why are you being punished? I have done anything. You're not being punished. I'm just really excited to have Beth here. <laughs> okay, and Chris Evans returned to the MCU in some vague way. The line which first broke the news suggests that the actor won't anchor his movie, but who is stand to pop up, pop up in another Avengers standalone adventure. Okay, real quick. Can I have you say pop up again? Pop up. Pop up. <laughs> it's really good. Sometimes, sometimes I feel I'm only the show because you make fun of me. No, I just like the pop up. Uh, I do want to also make fun of real quick. Uh, whoever wrote this was that Sean. Whoever wrote this, like coming back to MCU in some vague way, can't be how they phrased it in the Deadline article. Uh, but it's a really funny adjective. It, Sean's nodding his head like this is how they phrased it. Okay, so the Deadline article says Chris Evans coming back to MCU in some vague way. Feels like that's not very good reporting. <laughs> I'd like this that, uh, this headline, you know. Would be, I mean, uh, just sort of like that's a, that's not news. Then it's like in some vague way. Like I, I, I don't know. This news delivery format is actually like super grounded and down to earth. Like, can you imagine like a local news station being like, "Okay, next news, uh, yeah. returning to MCU in some vague way." <laughs> okay, next news, <laughs> like. <laughs> It just it's like some vague way like mystery. <laughs> you know, look, yeah, Beth, if I know two things, it's how TV works and like how to be famous. And I'm doing a really good job, like being the next Jimmy Kimmel or, or the other Jimmy Fallon or like anyone named Jimmy. Basically, I'm doing basically what they do, but better. And as a woman, which is twice as hard. <clears throat> next news. <laughs> Sean said that that was the headline of the article. Really? <laughs> ah, okay, it is time for the next segment uh, where we <laughs> where we uh, where we talk to Beth about what she's like. Oh, no more okay. news then, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> so Beth, how are you uh, like? I'm good. How are you like? like? Um, I'm okay. Like in terms of what am I like? Okay, I'm like. okay. I think. Got anything else? I mean, I, I know you've been doing a bunch of shows recently, and like. Uh, <laughs> and that you've like mentioned that that you and me are kind of a thing and we're kind of doing a thing and that's thing, great thing yeah yeah um, no today i was thinking you know how like when when big tentpole movies go out and like these actors will be doing press uh for like they'll they'll just like hit up like all of these uh night shows in like a day and stuff like yeah. that recording they get um, junket brain and i wait what they get junket brain where yes. they like to start repeating themselves? No, well, I mean that's like my my status quo. That's actually how I live. But um, I uh, famous right? I can't imagine actually having to go places and do it. I have sat in this chair in my <laughs> room, and this is the second thing I or the third thing I'm doing like ish today. And mm -hmm. I'm like, will I ever survive the pandemic in a mental way, in a mental capacity sort of way? But as for what I am like, um, I'm Beth. I, I'm a writer, actor. I live in LA. Um, uh, Video Drew knows my home address. She's not going to share it. No. Nope. But I do. Why does she know your address? Um, she's very I sent her a breakfast paper. 
a birthday gift like in, oh in interesting life. yeah mm -hmm. um asked drew for her home address so i could send her my famous postcards but um wait Hey, I, 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 okay, I'm sending you my address right now. Not like here. I'm gonna text it to you though. Just uh, hit it up in the stream labs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Stand okay, in the stream I'm, labs. I'm getting back on track here. Um, Beth, but, I bought one of your books of poems I found on Etsy. That. Oh no. <laughs> Do you have a book of poems? I have a book coming out actually uh, next month or so. I should be. Wait, really? You know, yeah, I should be knowing the exact date. In a like in this week, I'll have. Um, well, how come you didn't talk about that? Why do you not I, talk about that? Because I don't have a, a date yet, and I I'm super psyched because it's my first um my first hard copy thing that's being mass sort of produced or whatever. But um, yeah, thank you. Um, but other than that, I just like I I've got a cat. I chill. I've got a lot of roommates, and we chill. And um, I try to have a good time in like these uh, tumultuous this tumultuous era of ours do you have a cat no i, I want to get a dog what, real quick i'll be right back one, 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 i have one. two cats you have two cats what are their names bijou and ray bijou and ray oh my gosh they're so cute i uh, i wasn't a cat person and then i got cats and then hey guys guys cats are the best you see creatures this in the fucking mm -hmm. world the fuck you see this the tale of two besties, besties. I wrote this book. What? Where? Yeah. Where can one procure yeah. such a book? Like Amazon, anywhere. It says it's written by the Hello Google no. people, but I uh, ghost wrote it. Oh my gosh, you're like literally like a more well-adjusted Charlie Theron <laughs> from. Uh, <laughs> that's wild. That's fabulous. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, I get it. it is. It is fabulous. If you want to just hear a segment, there's parts where I, Ooh, I wrote yeah. text messages like from back and forth from the two girls. I've like pretended yeah. what it's like. I'll just read you the, the blurb. Sophia in the Rossi? Yeah. Best friends, BFFs, soul twinsies, whatever you want to call them. Harper and Lily were born to be besties with high school just around the corner. Casual, cool Cali girl, Harper and awkward, always costume girl, Lily, make sure to text each other every day about their bond. And then it's Harper saying, I love you so much that so I'm going to sneak out of detention to pay that guy from Craigslist $100 to cut off all your hair from my secret collection. <laughs> and Lily saying, I love you so much I'm going to destroy everyone in your life that matters and force you to depend on and love only me. Harper, that sounds beautiful. I love you. <laughs> it did not sell well. When did you wrote like, that? Um, like, my <laughs> oh man, it sounds like just a Jesus. textbook of healthy relationship. I can't <laughs> wait to get it. Yeah, Re reading back over it, like I, I haven't explored this book since I wrote it on Ambien four years ago. <laughs> that little blurb was so upsetting and so funny at the same time because that was that was that was me trying to be earnest like about how i thought like real best friends talk to each other <sighs> you know what live and learn that show was baby now it's in a book everybody has to deal with what you've like grown as a person and that's great and you're making money off of it so uh, how oh, many books did you wrote i made it all up front baby <laughs> like, that all went up front but that was that was a good that was a good chunk of change that's fabulous. Oh, that was crazy, guys. I got a little lightheaded just <laughs> reading that. No, yeah. I mean, between that and the Jolly Ranchers thing, there's a <laughs> lot of, like, weird literature going around tonight in the air. Wait, do you think we could go on Amazon and see if anyone reviewed this book? Heck yeah. Heck I mean, yeah. So, yeah, we were talking last night because I messaged you this this video. I don't want to, like, pretend like I just came up with this idea of, of reading reviews out loud and them being very funny. Uh, Jenny Nicholson did a video about spiders, fake spiders, uh, that she likes to review fake spiders on Amazon or like read reviews of it. And she did a whole like 20 minute video of it. And it was really funny. And I sent it to Beth May at like four or five o'clock in the morning. And I was like, what did you yeah, I, I love, I cannot stress enough how much I love shit like that. And I, I mean, I, I love, that's my favorite seg segment of how did this get made? And yes. like, um, and then. I so there were of, people are, people are like five stars. So we're always like reading shit off of like Reddit relationships and am I the <laughs> asshole to each other? And I can't, I, I just like die. I, if we have time, I want to read you this, uh, our, our relationships text that is. I, like, I do want to read that. Book In fact, club. I, I want to read that as soon as I did find out that people have given reviews to my book online. Yeah. And maybe this is not like the healthiest thing to do during your interview segment, but like, let's, no. let's do it. Go, go into it. 
Oh, they they put a whole segment of it on Amazon. Okay, well, okay, come on. Um, let's see. They're all five stars. They're all five stars. I think these are all fake reviews. Um, let's see. A YA novel that's enjoyable for adults as well. Believable characters and plot. Three stars. It's good. It's good. No, it's good. Um, Why do the three stars hurt more than the one stars? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The next one says five stars. Feels right reading it. Then all caps. This book is for 12 years old and up. If you have no perspective of puberty, do not read. This book was fantastic. <laughs> I love the way the author puts in the BFF battles. Always happens to me. I recommend this book to all. Um, and then someone gave it fourth foot stars and so and said Brizzy voices. This is my dad's account, but I love you, Brizzy, aka Anna. This is a great book, and Anna is the best. Oh man, who is Anna? I have no idea who Anna is. Okay, I don't think Anna is a person. Like that's the Anna's not a character. That's not that's not anything. So now you go read me some of the reviews for your thingy. Oh, okay. So um, as long as we're we're doing our own review things i want mm -hmm. to pull up a couple of reviews of um so i uh hello world i work on a, a podcast it's a, it's, a dungeon, it's a dungeons and, and dragons podcast uh and uh actually small worlds i know mm -hmm. somebody who worked on life is strange but um oh really that show has a lot to do with twin peaks so that's cool um yeah, go ahead. Life is, you know, life is strange is ultimately the the message I got from that. But okay, so I wait, wait, wait. I'm being told Anna Brisbane it was an author actress who narrated the book. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Anyway, that's hi crazy. Pete. Yeah, by the way, he's Brazilian, by the way. That you wrote. That's fabulous. Yes, I'm going to have to get it, and I'm going to have to send you yeah. a copy of it, and it's going to no, be that's fantastic. That's really awesome. That's I, wild. Yeah, I, I mean. Um, uh, yeah, so I so I work on this this podcast called Dungeons and Daddies, which is not a not a BJ podcast. Um, okay. okay. Did you did you guys name it that just so you could like be like, and it's not a BJ something? Okay, I'm yeah. on to you. Like the tagline of the podcast. I didn't come up with the idea. I, the idea, um, but my friends, my friends, uh, apparently they were driving around and thought about how the archetypes of like very the tropes of dadness are. Um, are very kind of similar to like the the breakdowns in D and D characters because it's like charisma, strength, like I don't know, or like the bridge. classes, like there's like um, uh, barbarians, like coach dad, and then um, uh, rock and roll dad would be like a bard dad. So I had never heard of any of these uh, these <laughs> these like terms, or I had, I just never played D and D before, and I I didn't really have or any your father. I wasn't a father either, you know, uh, at least not that I know of. Interesting. <laughs> ah. So, um, so what do you, what do you, what dad are you on the show? I play Ron Sampler, who is a stepfather. Um, okay. A stepfather. Uh, yeah. So the whole premise of the show is like, it's four dads from our world who get flung into the forgotten realms on a quest to rescue their lost sons who go missing on the way to a soccer game. And so, um, it's it's a ton of fun. I'm doing it with some of my best friends in the world. I just like I love it, and uh, I'm also obsessed with like the reviews for it, specifically this one review that I need to find because <laughs> it's just like please bring it up. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a step deeper and then go to my like, Goodreads, and because I'm now obsessed with the idea that people are gonna be talking about this book because Anna Bresbin wrote about it <laughs> or uh, did a voice. She narrated it. Yeah, who's Anna Breskin again? Who is that? I don't. I don't know that person. I'm gonna she's famous. She's famous. She has a famous cool. name, you know. Oh, she's the, she's a YouTuber. She's oh, okay. she's a Pokemon. She's a okay. Pokemon. Okay. 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 So, um, this was in the first year of us doing the show. So this was uh, we were having universal acclaim. It felt like, except for, you know, this one. This is called Good Podcast with one catch: two stars. <laughs> Oh, no. podcast. The interaction between Will, Anthony, Freddie, and Matt is fantastic, and they remind me of my old gaming group. However, I cannot stand Beth May. She apparently thinks she is the comedy relief for the group. Yeah, she's <laughs> really funny. Her over-the-top sexual jokes and things that she apparently thinks guys do gets very tiresome after the second episode, and this is to the point that I wish I could bleep her out without missing dialogue. <gasps> uh, 
She rarely contributes to the group, and I quickly got tired of her in the last episode, constantly looking for wood rather than something more useful because she felt <laughs> as a man that's important to me. And her constant jokes about not receiving the metaphorical sword Henry spoke about. It seemed others in the group got tired of this too. Beth May is the sole reason this podcast is not receiving a five from me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wait, uh, what were you saying about wood? <laughs> Uh, she I, always uh, search for wood. Is that it? I just I I make a lot of w what I do love about it. Genuinely, I love that this podcast, especially playing a man on the podcast, allows me to sort of, um, and all of us are in on this sort of like examining toxic masculinity and the way that the patriarchy hurts men generationally and stuff like that. And so, like, I in playing a man make a lot of jokes about like, uh, well. Uh, maybe we should get a bigger stick of wood because uh, I'm a man and that's what a man would do. And so like, uh, <laughs> your boy voice is cute. <laughs> it's cute. People I like it. Like an anime boy, boy voice. Uh, yeah, it does, it does sound like an anime boy voice and I'm, I like it. I'm just telling you a compliment. It's not one way or the other. Yeah. It's good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I think that that really sets people <laughs> off sometimes. AJ, you should. I, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I I can't speak for people's tastes or whatever, but I feel like sometimes I have good taste, and I think that this is a pretty good. Or I'm proud to be on the podcast. I like it a lot. I, so. you know what? As somebody who once wrote in a YA book that someone should pay somebody off a Craigslist to go kidnap someone and steal their hair, uh, I would definitely give this podcast idea five, ten stars, even. That's fabulous. I Actually, so later the wild thing is that later that same reviewer came back and was. Um, was like, uh, let me see if I can. <laughs> did they, wait, did they me. apologize? No, no. Let me yeah. get this. You never, you never approached them, right? Because what I like to do on Reddit is yeah. find the people that are talking about video Drew sucking and the schmodown, and then individually like respond to them on as Reddit, and then like <laughs> like individually take out my day and be like, hey, friendo, like I hope that ten dollars is sent to your PayPal account makes a difference. Like thumbs up. Like pretend like they're like complicit with like some sort of scheme that we're doing. <laughs> like oh give them gold. Really so good. Um, and they always change their tune. They're always like, oh sorry, like I didn't know you were here. Sorry, yeah, ma'am. Like sorry. Oh no, I yeah, so I I used to That's reach sweet. out to to people uh on the podcast more often. I mean, especially if they were <laughs> if they didn't have something nice to say, I would reach out and be like dude, I'm so sorry that like that uh, that you didn't like that episode or that you were offended by it. And that I, I'm sorry if we've done something problematic or whatever. Not that we do anything often, but I used to very much, uh, it, it used to really hurt me in, on an oh. individual level. Oh. But now it's like, I, Beth, you, no, you got to them. You gotta let them know that you see them and you see what they're doing. No, and like, it's, 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 it's just kind of like, uh, at this point, it's like, we are doing the best that we can in accordance with our personal in integrity, which I, you know, like a lot of people think that their integrity is good and it's not, but I do, <laughs> but I'm generally doing my best here. And so like, I just feel like you can't, there are some people that you cannot, <laughs> you cannot make happy. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Said, there are some people you can make happy. You cannot please and everybody, you know. Wait, wait, I want the story to have a happy ending. Could you make this guy happy? Did Beth do it? I think we did. Gosh, I can't. <laughs> Uh, There's just too many reviews of my cool Dungeons and Dungeons, Dungeons and Dungeons podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically this this dude, or uh, of course it was a dude, um, came back and like. <laughs> of course, like, it was a dude. He said, "I used to hate, I used to hate Beth May, but now I hate Freddie Wong." And like he just completely reversed his yeah, and now said that Freddie was the worst part of the podcast. So. No, so he like didn't he didn't like give it five stars? Oh no, 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 no never. Oh. But you know, as long as the pressure was off. But he hated the character, not you, basically. Yeah, no, he hated Freddie as a person. You know, it, it's rough. Uh, yeah, he didn't think he hated like Freddie's name in your character. No, yours is somebody else, right? Um, I play, yeah, I play a character uh, named Ron Stampler. Okay, so the Ron game, Stampler. the game Beef says, "I love Dungeons and Daddies. It's my favorite podcast out there, but you need to know that they do not play D and D properly or well." <laughs> this is one hundred percent true. Like, uh, I, I, another one of my well, favorite. Okay. that makes sense. Daddy yeah. Is a podcast that's like, um, is it offices and bosses? Is it the is it the Hello from the Magic Tavern spinoff where they do? Dungeons and Dragons, but it's called Offices and Bosses, where they're in our world and they're playing office coworkers. Because that's one of my favorite podcasts, oh, and I they also don't play Dungeons and Dragons. I need to hear about that. I need to. 
I need to find out where that is because that sounds something like the the boys would be very interested in. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Hello Magic Tavern is already like a, a, a magical mystery podcast. You know, like that's already a comic thing. Then they do a spinoff where they do Dungeons and Dragons, but they set it in our world and they all play like office employees and it's really good. Uh, really and it's good. Office and bosses. That's fucking awesome. I w that's one of those ideas. Like I wish I had a thought of, <laughs> I thought of, I, uh, we were on um, one of their other spinoff podcasts, uh, Hey Riddle Riddle, though, and they were yeah. just like so fabulous. I just had a, the time of my life. They're just like the most fun, most talented, funny people ever. I, I love them so much. I love Adel Rafai like so much. Uh, that's like the Hey Riddle Riddle guy. Uh, I've, I I asked him, I was like, do you guys really play Dungeons and Dragons? And he was like, no, that would be such a waste of time. Like that's not what people would actually do on a podcast where they talk about playing Dungeons and Dragons. You don't actually play. Like when you're doing an improv show, like version of Dungeons and Dragons, you don't actually, yeah. you can't like afford to do that. Uh, well, we actually play. However, I've got to do one more review and then I'll get yeah. off of this. No, madness. please stay on this. No, continue, okay, please. So this is, uh, this is a, a review. Okay. This podcast is super funny, but they are definitely not playing D&D. &D. I'm only through about 20 eps and almost every combat encounter, there's game breaking amount of disregard for basic combat rules. I don't mean niche subclass mechanics or whatever. They're straight up ignoring saving throws, legendary actions, and even the basic action economy. I don't consider myself a rule stickler, and I honestly don't even play D&D, &D, but I've listened to a couple <laughs> of podcasts. What? That what? is not the way He's to like, argue. I'm just in a, I'm just a <laughs> I've listened to a couple of podcasts, and this is the only one Jesus. where the rules ignoring is so egregiously game-breaking, I had to stop listening. Come for the good jokes. It's really funny. Don't come from D and D. One star. I'm like, well, you kind of sound like you like it though. Like, I think I, mean, I think we found out who it is. It's the game thief. <laughs> oh damn! You hate to see it. Well, I mean, thanks for listening. If you, yeah. I never played D and D my entire life. Um. So wait, I, but you said you actually are playing D and D. How are you playing it incorrectly? Then I don't know how D and D is played. So like, maybe I don't care. But so, like, you know, it's like I know so little about it that I can't even tell you what I'm supposed to be uh, <laughs> supposed to be doing right. But I had never played in my life and uh, was very much more interested in the story and the idea of uh, playing a stepdad and stuff like that. And then just, just improving with these people. They're like my best friends. And uh, and so they taught me how to play D and D, where you're like rolling dice and, and et cetera, et cetera, and um, I can just tell you, like, it. I hate, I don't want to like offend anybody. It does not interest me in, at all playing. Sounds really boring. Very, like, the, especially the, I'm very bad at math. I'm just not, I, I'm just like not good at thinking. Yeah, I like the part where you get to be somebody else. Like, that's always interesting to me. The cosplay, yeah. like, that and, seems cool. And it's also, it's like, not only are you being somebody else, but it's like these are, people are all writers and we all know each other pretty well. And then to, the most compelling mechanic is the idea of the dice roll. So it's like, uh, it's really cool. Is is you're like you're building basically a mutual story where you don't have control over what the other people are gonna do and what they're going to, uh, you know, say or fight. And that's scary. Uh, and like is all a trust exercise. Like it's like a trust exercise. I mean, explain D and D to me like I'm uh like I'm five, but also like I mean, I'm a 36 year old woman. I guess I never learned it. No, like we need a like a nice bearded glasses man to come in and explain it to both of us. Because, yeah, basically, yeah. like you're playing a character uh -huh. and you have these stats. So say I have like a I I'm just so out of the zone right now. I can't even like I have a strength. We love, stat. We love you, game Steve. We love you, game Steve. <laughs> Um, this is the right attitude to bring into it. Oh no! Hey, Game Steve, like I, yo, I, I so appreciate you for listening and even like mentioning it in the comments. Like I, anybody who listens and gives it a shot, I super appreciate. So please don't say sorry. Um, and yeah, feel free to warn anybody who is expecting something other than the stupid thing that we are doing. But um, basically, you know, to it's like a trust exercise exacerbated by like luck because like you can you can have the best strategy in the world of how you're going to get past like a a creepy guard with a sword or whatever but if you roll and you get like a one then you can't you know everything's kind of fucked and you need to to reorganize and i mean it's it's a lot like you know beats in a story it's just like the hero tries this one thing and then uh, it doesn't work you have to sort of reframe and think do it another way there's it's very way. unpredictable uh, so it's kind of like life, but it's more interesting because you actually are trying to work together. 
Yeah, it's like it's like a less toxic version of life, which is a lot because there are swords and death and stuff. And, and it seems like it probably feels like the D and D community can be kind of toxic, but you're saying it's <clears throat> less toxic than people storming the government. So or you had like people, people hating less Jedi. You, know, you got to you just had to make this political. So, um, no, I and you know what? Like I I had had a certain sort of uh, preconceived notion about. D and D nerds going into it because I oh, had uh, well, what well, yeah I mean being like a a woman in nerd culture or whatever but I have to say that and I'm not just simping our fans here but like <laughs> I assume that they're like our the people who follow us are are incredible and they're like super loyal they're super funny they come up with like these awesome fan arts and stuff like that like I'm blown away by the talent uh that uh, we are. Uh, that we are forcing this podcast upon rather than, you know, because they have talent uh, well worth sharing with the world. So oh, I said that same way about like anyone who makes video do fan art. And I'm like, you know that I haven't like won any, like this was like last season. I remember like being like, you know, I haven't won a game. Like you guys don't need to make me art, which is like a form of commerce in some better cultures. Like if yeah. we can meet aliens, like that will be their money. It will we be need drawn more art. fan art, by the way. For what? Pilots. We need more fan art. Yeah. So if you want to make video do fan art, Please go do it and then give it to me for free, even though I just said it should be worth money for the aliens. Actually, right now. Okay, okay. Me and my ex husband did used to have a joke where whenever we'd go to a Caribbean island, oh god, my life used to be way different. Um, we would go and <laughs> it would there'd always be like these paintings for sale, like on the side of the road, like it would just be like near the knickknacks and everything else. There would just be like large full size oil canvases, like knockoff prints of like other people's work. Or like people in Jamaica would just make their own like, but it would like be a giant canvas, and you're just like, who is buying these? Like on the way back and forth, like to the airport, and we decide like no one, no one is actually picking up this side of the road artwork, but it's like for the aliens. Like that's what they're gonna do is like it's gonna be for the aliens when they come down and see like the last remnants of civilization. They'll assume that like the artwork was our money because we kept it so close to the planes. <sighs> and that was that was a little bit into my old life. Uh, Adelia is saying, I know nothing about D and D, but I want to listen to best podcast because I want, because it sounds cool. Well, that's yes. the spirit. That's you know, spirit. If I, there we go. Oh, yeah. That'll, be, that'll be 40 shillings, please. Now we have a new fan performance art poems. <laughs> um, okay. So. Okay. So I want to hear a little bit, actually speaking of poems, I wanted to hear a little bit, because I still haven't, I bought it, but I didn't realize where I can download it from. So I still haven't opened your book, your books yet that I got from Etsy, because I think I can download them. But yeah, like, it's yeah, poem yeah. zero, right? Like one of them's poems. Yeah, I, so this is, this is a pretty wild part of my old life, you know, our current life. But uh, um, so in, in college, I, I was like a professional uh, uh spoken word poet where i we like tore around and wait and, really yeah and i i that's you know, amazing not, not a very sustainable thing for me there are people so uh yeah i've got friends who are just like vastly more talented than i am and absolutely make and rock careers doing this and like, like, Saul williams just, or like I've, I've never met Saul williams but like I, I mean just to throw a name out there that everybody should absolutely go check out is micah borne like one of my one of my best friends, he's just like, I, it blows me away that I'm friends with somebody this talented because he's just, he's incredible. Um, so yeah, if you Google uh, Micah Borne, a time like this, and it's spelled like Borns, but you know. Micah Borne, can you put it in the chat so we can all spell it? Yeah. Please. <laughs> How do I write in this chat? Um, You just like type the words. Oh, okay. Uh, you can go to and I'll, I'll copy it. Because you should see the private chat. Oh, okay. There we go. I'm seeing now producer B's comment that that was the headline of the article. I don't, it, send me the link. <laughs> I don't believe you either. Yeah. Uh, Sean, Moore, that, that's strange to be honest with you. I don't think big is in a headline, but if you, if you tell me it is, then I will believe you for five seconds. Vague. Vague. Vague is such a good thing. As a, as a former journalist, because that's what I used to do. I was a, Journal. I was like, I ran a I'm freaking Jared Kushner's newspaper entertainment section of Jared Kushner's newspaper that he owned. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, that's what I did for like six years of my life. No big deal. Uh, we all had different lives, but we being a spoken word poet, it just so, seems way different. So you're a vague journalist? 
So being a journalist, what was being a spoken word poem like? You have to have a lot of confidence. Actually, <laughs> no, you have to hate yourself a lot. Um, no, like that was my case. But um, uh, yeah, it's like, I don't even, I, I remember how I got into it is that I saw, um, there's this other very amazing spoken word poet that uh, was at ASU and his name was Merlin Hepworth. And I think he's gone on to be, do more rap now. And he's, I mean, he's just incredibly talented. And um, I'd never had any interest in poetry middle school or high school, I was always like very interested in writing and I wanted to be uh, a writer and I wanted to be an actor. And uh, when I saw Merlin doing this open mic, I went and saw it, he was incredible. It was like, it was very much the the music for people who don't do music sort of situation. And it felt like a really great way to incorporate both uh acting and writing you know like just the performance element of it even though there's no character really but um yeah i've been a spoken word artist guys i feel like that i feel like i should have been a spoken word artist maybe that's what i should have done like i and it's it's wild because there's like uh it's uh like it sounds it sounds like a lot more pretentious than it is i think i i don't know that's like my opinion uh and uh whenever the world stops ending you should you should head to the poetry lounge which is the, the biggest uh, open mic mm-hmm. in LA. And like, they have just absolutely just stunning talented people there. Just, I guess, you know, I guess there was this moment I had when I like left Collider and like moved back to New York, which was like last year. And I started doing Schmodown and I had to figure out like a way to define what I was doing, not just to other people, but like to myself, I like what I'm hyphen at life is just dumb. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. <laughs> a career for a very long time and I was like a journalist and that's like a thing that you are and like you can not people what do you do I'm a journalist what do you do uh I am like uh I'm a character in a movie trivia game show but like the game show is real so I'm not on it very often (laughs) because I'm not very good at the game show part but people seem to enjoy the part where I'm not answering questions about movie trivia (laughs) Like, you can't put that on your LinkedIn. So I was just, like, performance artist. And it sounds very pretentious. But, like, I feel like that's, like, the best way that, like, I just started talking about it. And then I just started doing YouTube stuff. And I was, like, performance artist. It sounds terrible. No, and it's, like, I I mean, I... But is it true? It's just, it's it's honestly, it's the, the truth. And I think it's very hard in this sort of era where the way that people make money and the way that people uh, use their talent is, like, shifting in a way that isn't, really nail downable and it's just like mm-hmm. yeah you, there's just we have not developed the language to describe yeah, you're right. uh, this sort of era that we're living in in terms of artists or whatever but we should be proud of that you know i'm very proud of this show for example yeah no, i see what you're saying i also think maybe it's gonna maybe and like like really guys i want you to hit the buzzer real quick on this analogy if it seems like it's going in the wrong direction okay, okay. so get the buzzers ready it seems kind of like how 10 years ago we were talking about gender and sexuality spectrums uh as like you know it's like we didn't quite have the language or like the language was different so much so that now when we refer to things that happen i was trying to explain like what happens in from peak season two which is david duchovny comes on as a transvestite character but uh, now, like in season three, it's it's going to become like he's playing a trans a trans woman, and like what the difference is of like that thing that happened a decade ago versus like how we talk about it now. It's just a decade ago, it had different language, and I think maybe that's going to be how we think about skill sets and knowledge and who we are as people. Yeah, I guess I I think if like if you specifically think about is like so people within certain. Uh, uh, like gender spectrum i know that it's not quite a spectrum but the the sort of all uh yeah let me yeah. think of a, a better way to say this but i think when you're a part of the lgbt community which i am not i think that you've developed the language for these things within mm-hmm. the community a long time before they ever reach like turrets like me and mm-hmm. so i think that uh yeah like maybe maybe sort of this sort of stuff is like also like Etsy where it's just like there's there's a small but very specific amount of labels for stuff that you do on the the mm-hmm. internet and then now they're finally getting out to the yeah regular. well like think about the word like creator like creator is one of those terms where like a decade ago it's like you would have been like somebody's like what do you do and you're like creator 
like people be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what do you like? What do you create? Also, like that sounds weird. Also, like, what do you think you're like an old timey magician? Like, now yeah. you're like, you're like we have a context for the creator means something, even though the word is like the same word. It's like we have a context for what creator means in the context of work environment. Yeah, you know. I think that's really that was a really good point. It's a good made. analogy. It's a Thank good you. analogy. Thank you guys and for very it. often. It's showbiz, baby. That's what I say. Um, is that your catchphrase? No, no, because it's not mine, really. But uh, <laughs> my, my catchphrase it's is like, time. It's like, hey, Chad, take this picture of me for TikTok. That's my like my catchphrase. Or like, Travis, does this sound like a good tweet? Like, yeah, that's my my catchphrase. Wait, wait, is it like um, I was actually speaking to your, not life catchphrase, but like Schmodown specific catchphrase? I know I was, was not going to ask anything Schmodown specific, but now I want to know: Can will that be your Schmodown specific catchphrase? Like, hey, Trevor, take a picture of me for TikTok. Um, <laughs> I guess stay tuned. You know, I'm crossing my fingers that I get drafted and then that I find a place where I'm able to. Uh, flourish <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like at this point Beth, i don't think you need to be in schmodown i think we're just also like enamored with you from having seen you and like met you that like we're all just interested in like what you're going to do next regardless of it's Schmodown related content like i i honestly do not care about uh how well you do at movie trivia sorry hot take i just don't that's like no, not that's what cool or not cool <laughs> no yeah like that's i will definitely say that the the movie trivia part is the part i'm most nervous or yeah in some in some respects most nervous some respects least nervous about i think yeah. <laughs> but i'm not gonna unpack that here tonight <laughs> you have you already have the personality part that's nice of you i i yeah i i do some people that. don't have good personalities and i don't just mean that in a way of like uh schmodown i just mean that like in general like it's just not a matter of being funny you know it's being it's just about having a good personality yeah and it's, it's not is, just this people, people are off, awesome regardless of trivia performance. And that's the kind of energy we need absolutely more of in the world. Yes, Pete Wiz, thank you. Freya Hall's asking, uh, is that a sanctified Buffy on the wall? People always ask you what's on your wall. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It's we got we got Buffy and then we got um uh bold and brash on the other wall there. Or what's, on bold the same wall. Yeah. what's bold and brash? Trevor, oh, what are you doing? Gone. Wait, Trevor's it's here. <laughs> Trevor's oh, away. Oh no, gotta watch Trevor, the language. Trevor, it's like four time. Hide the shirt. Hey, um, is Trevor that boy that helps you? No, Dan, that's how we refer to you. <laughs> um, <sighs> Golden Rush is uh, the the self portrait that Squidward does in SpongeBob. <laughs> oh, I, I like SpongeBob. SpongeBob. I like SpongeBob. I love SpongeBob. Oh God. I like um, her. She likes SpongeBob. <laughs> Trevor, hey guys, hey guys, yeah, that is that's Trevor's. Trevor's part of my gang. Beth May is part of my gang. It's like a gang of people. We like roll. We roll like six, seven deep. Garth is part of the gang. Like Adelia is part of the gang. Like Sean's part of the gang. Like Danny doesn't like to play a movie trivia, so he doesn't join very often. But like, yeah, people, don't cat at all. We got Chris, you know, like we got yeah, single. We got yeah, uh, Devlin. It's good. It's a good group, guys. You should sign up to my Patreon, but I'll plug that later. Please like and subscribe sign to this up, video. Sign up for Drew's Patreon, everybody. Yeah, do okay. that. Yeah, good Patreon. See if anybody. Guys, do it. We're gonna be revamping the tiers, and we're gonna be doing a lot of more fun stuff. Like probably this could involve Beth May, just to be honest. Like she'll just probably be there. I'll so be, like you're, I'll be over here revamping the tiers. <laughs> Love crying. Oh, big oh fan. my god. Ah. Was, um, yeah. I do. Sorry, now that I've taken the reins of this thing, but I do want to read this. Like our relationships. <laughs> uh, of story that has been just taking my house by storm. We're obsessed with it. We can't stop talking about it. Please, Is it please, okay with please, you? Please. If we have to not do tonight's game, that's okay because we'll have. Okay, I will be. I'll be really quick and then let's. No, no. Because honestly, I'd rather do this and then we keep the game for like one or two things near the end, just not right. to go on forever. But like, I want to hear this very badly. <laughs> okay, so um, for those unfamiliar, um, our relationships is a Reddit where you can get relationships and then talk about your relationships okay so this, this one is called my uh 25 female boyfriend 27 male of two years is obsessed with dave and busters <laughs> first of all this is about me i'm already still fucking shook i really don't know where to start with this and it sounds very petty but i am at my wits end dealing with my boyfriend 
<laughs> Some context. We have been together for two years and he's overall fantastic. Very thoughtful, kind, funny, interesting, and responsible. For instance, he always brings me my favorite snacks when he goes out without me even asking for them. He'll comfort me after a tough day at work. I work at a call center and get some crazy ones. For the most part, he is also very respectful of me. We were both raised Catholic, and he's very active in the church and an overall stand-up guy, which I admire a lot. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally the only problem in our relationship <laughs> is this obsession with Dave and Buster's. <laughs> There's no problem with that. No lies detected. I'm, I'm only telling Buster's. you guys all of this so you don't just tell me to break up with him. <laughs> because although we have this problem, I really don't want to leave him. I guess, How bad could it be? <laughs> I guess I will just get to the bad part. My boyfriend absolutely must go to Dave and Buster's once a week or else he throws a tantrum. Yeah, I'm not right. exaggerating when I use the word tantrum. We are talking crying, stopping, etc. It is bad. He will beg and plead and state that the only thing he wants is for us to go to Buster's. And if it's been more than a week, he'll say, we haven't been in forever. I've tried talking it through with him. I've, just tr I've tried suggesting other restaurants even other barcades but it has to be dave and busters when i tell him i don't really enjoy going with him and that he could go alone he says something like what do you mean you love busters i, I give you all my prizes when we when we do go we spend a ridiculous amount of money which i split with him and he makes me follow him around to watch him play every game I pressed him about it, and the only explanation he's been able to give me is that he had his ninth birthday at a Dave and & Buster's and considers it the single best day of his life. How do I help him move past this? I really want to keep dating this man. I know nostalgia can be a powerful force, but this is absolutely unacceptable. Please help Reddit. Wait, okay, I have like several thoughts. First oh of all, where do I find me one of these men? Like I am such a Dave and Busty's aficionado, but I don't mind going alone. Dave and and I go, I go literally. If you don't know what Dave and Buster's is, uh, if you've never been to one, it's like. <sighs> sorry, I laughed so hard I made myself dizzy. <laughs> um, it's Chuck E. Cheese for sad old people. Chuck e. Cheese for sad old <laughs> okay, so it's Chuck E. Cheese for sad old people. Um, you can drink there like an adult. You can also. If you're me, just like get really into like the hardcore gaming section. Like, and by hardcore gaming, I'm dizzy. I'm so dizzy. Um, the hardcore gaming section is like, um, you can, yeah, like sort of like you can trade things in for points, but the points are tickets and the tickets trade for real stuff. Like these days, you can get like a PS4. I was about 100 points out from a PS4 when COVID happened. And like, I made sure that when, like I came here to LA, like I was just coming for the free for all. I made sure to take one of my Dave and Buster's card, but not the other one. So I made my sister ship me the second one, but by then everything was closed down. So I couldn't touch my tickets. I'm getting off topic. I'm seeming way too pacific. Now you gotta get the, the PS5. It's all context. I know. Now it would have to be the PS5, but I got in touch with Dave and Buster's on Twitter and they were like, okay, here's like the secret site to go to to redeem your tickets for stuff still. Oh, Dave yeah, and Buster's are tens. <laughs> We went to it. We we live pretty close to one actually, and we went to one after our entire house became obsessed with that specific post. And uh, our <laughs> our roommate Joe, he got like blitz drunk, just shriggity shrecked out of his mind on the uh, the the hot wings and beer, and um, <laughs> and so he stole a uh, like a traffic pylon. And it's still in our backyard. Wait, really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. Wait, was okay because uh, I I didn't know like no, no there are no answers there like there are no <laughs> answers to that that's just uh, so wait can I read some of the can you read me some of the comments like what's going on with this post what do people think because my second thought is this person is like probably a little bit on the spectrum maybe like if I had to guess a little bit like the person that she's talking about the boyfriend and like let a guy have his thing like yeah, I, don't, I don't have the, I don't have the post pulled up because that was a screenshot that I t <laughs> that I took. <laughs> Um, but I remember the comments were being like, no, you should probably break up with him, actually. It's really wrong. <laughs> Dave and Buster's, like, first of all, like, if anyone on Reddit, like, hasn't been to a Dave and Buster's, they're, like, lying. 
to you or they want to go so bad i've never gone before reading this and then i i wish i could come back and tell you that like oh i went and actually this all makes perfect sense and like i'm the person like we haven't been a buster so forever but um I'm not. it's like so schlitz like drunk off of like terrible girly drink it's like girl drink drunk place yeah, like the it's idea of getting just absolutely just tanked at a, at a dave and busters um, at like a 4 p.m dave and busters like when i think of things that i miss like actually miss from the real world yeah i have to say one of my like best memories is being drunk alone by myself last time i was at dave and busters here in los angeles at like 8 p.m after seeing like birds of prey with with the with the what's his name with the uh, jeff snyder like after we saw birds of prey jeff left and then i went to go play a four and a half hours worth of Dave and Buster's by myself getting increasingly drunk. And I was so happy. And it's like maybe my last pure moment of the outside world. So like, I yeah, I'd say that's what I'm doing. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's my, that's my memory that I missed. That's the one thing I missed that. And I'm um, state fairs. Oh my God. I really I like love it. state fairs because Where it's like, fairs? it kind of, it mixes the, uh, oh. like thrill of like, uh, roller coasters with the real threat of like bungee Die of bungee jumping because like you could. My God, you, you can like really, okay. So he doesn't know. So Danny doesn't know. Um, explain state fairs. They're not quite amusement parks, but they're, they're like legally allowed to operate like they are. Okay, I here's what how I would describe uh state fairs is like if you have like a storage box, like say like a like a an actual wooden box that like a chest or something chest. now this is like the banker's box like cardboard version of that so if, like if the, if the like the chest the solid thing is like an amusement park this is something that people just assemble on empty lot over the course of a weekend using a weekend. like yeah like and and none of it is regulated like that's why it goes from like state to state or whatever Mm-hmm. I there are just accidents all the time, just like horrific things that happen. People getting like but, their arms off. There's like there's like a there's like a Final Destination movie that takes place at an amusement park, but it should technically yeah. just take place at a state fair because it's like yeah, like a nut's gonna like a nut or bolt is gonna fall off this Ferris wheel or this gravitron yeah. or this thing that shouldn't really even exist because like what it does is fuck with your like sense of fi- like not five G like no not yeah and it like the other five G. But the thing is, like, they do something to their kettle corn that we forget. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, sure. Then we have sure, this really honey, we'll, go pet, we'll go pet the pigs and get kettle corn and then we'll yeah. grab it. And we're allowed to touch all the animals. They have, like, all the animals that like, are legally allowed to be at farms. They just bring you to them. Uh, and you're allowed to touch them before, like, I touching think- the food. Then they have this, like, yeah. they have this, like, vilely rotted food. But some of it's really good. But you never know if you're going to get, like, the thing that's that's just three days old and, like, swarming with maggots. Like, it's just, it's awful. It's great. It's my favorite place on the world. It's a very video drew experience to just go to a state I, fair and it also has I games. That the, like the big reveal in Soderbergh's Contagion should be that it started at a state fair and that somebody was touching a pig. And <laughs> so I was like petting like a little chicken or something because they have all the chickens. You have never known that America has bred so many different kinds of chickens, but they have every single kind. Uh, there's like a hundred of them. They've got pigs. They I've seen Clyde steal horses now. As the vine goes. Yeah. It's Did kind of like we just sent me wow. the the Brazilian like equivalent of a state fair. Now 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 I understand. Yeah, what is the Brazilian crazy. state fair? That sounds like that sounds like a, a sex It's basically thing. going to a very specific avenue that exists here just to buy like a watch. Mm-hmm. But instead you wanna go to like a actual theme park. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like that. I also think that if you want to go to a good, if you're in LA folks <clears throat> and the world starts up again and you want to go to a good thing, go to um, Knott's Berry Farm. Cause it's like the perfect halfway point between like, a, like, like big corporate, like big corporate amusement park, like Disney and Six Flags, which is like, you want your big corporation money coming in to amusement park stuff. And then there's like, then there's like the unbranded or off branded uh, Knott's Berry Farm where like the only things that they could license we're the following. Like, what's great about Not Scary Farm? I I only go to I only go to Not Scary Farm. Big, it's really good. Not I've never been to this Not Scary Farm. How is it? Um, it's great because like it's it's the amusement rides and stuff are well regulated there, and they do feel safe. They're really and they're very scary though. 
Very they hi- yeah, they are. And they they hire actors to to be the people jumping out at you throughout the park. And those are always like super unregulated and scary because like, you know, that like, oh, I hate that I'm saying this, but like, you know, like I could probably sue them if like if something went wrong. Like I'm mean, like, you know, this poor actor or whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I tripped and broke my leg and. No, I'm <laughs> I would never. Yeah, I would never. Just hurt. like your buddies, like two of your roommates do that. Like they just like that's me. Next season is like going to try to be an actor. Now that you mention it, that's like such a great job that I never thought of doing in LA. Why did I never oh. audition to be in the Scary Nights? Like, um, it doesn't pay well, and it's it is it's like weirdly like competitive. But yeah, um, I'm scary. I'm weird. Oh yeah, right. you should absolutely do it. Um, you can go as high as scary. That's what I always say. What did you say? You're not that scary. No, not you. Her. (laughs) I said you can. uh, You can always go as high as both your dreams and an amusement park take you. So, Uh, he was saying not scary is scary. God, on first, it's not spelled like that. It's spelled the other not. But I was gonna say it's really funny because the only thing they can license, because like everything else is like already licensed. The only thing that Knott's Berry has, and I swear to God, this is true, is like Snoopy and the Red Baron. Uh, and if you're aware, they're the same person or like they're the same dog. Like it's, it's, but then they also ca- uh, license the idea of cowboys. So it's like Westworld. So part of the farm is like, or like Knott's Berry, it's not farm. It's like part of the amusement park is like Westworld theme. And that's like cool. And then like part of it's like Snoopy, but not the rest of the characters from Peanuts. Um, and then there's like one more thing that they have. Maybe yeah. Snoopy's friend who's like that yeah. little bird. It's Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's weird. Yeah, anyway. Uh so I guess now is the time that we will go to the game. This we based it this week about um you you and your thing, Beth. Uh oh, which wow. is podcasting. Danny's oh, that's gone. Cool. Thank you. Where'd Danny go? Okay, anyway. Danny's gonna come back. I or maybe not. R.I.P. Crow boy. Uh now you're the co host of the show. You want- I'm the crow. Become you're the, the crow host. Yeah, let's do it. Beep beep. Cock, cock. Cock, cock. Dude, you're doing it naturally. Okay, so uh, uh, now we're going to do this thing where we're going to put up pictures of movie scenes and we're going to talk about what podcasts we'd be doing if we were in the world of this movie. Okay, if we were in the world of this movie, that yeah. the podcast. Okay. I think that's like the fun prompt. If we're in the world okay. of this movie, what is the podcast we'd be making? Okay, let's get going. Danny went off to Dave and Buster's. Oh my god! I think Ooh. exactly. I think exactly. Wait, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, go it. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, this is this is not. This is, we've started realizing these are collaborative games. They're not. They're not who wins because it really just works if we collaborate on them. So no, I think I'm gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think like. I, I think it would be funny in the Joker world to have like a podcast that is like just a straight comedy podcast talking about the comedy scene, <laughs> the like the stand up comedy scene in uh, in whatever fucked up version of Gotham. That is. Yeah, like they listen to they listen to Murray every night. It's like, yeah. Someone said this so, uh, is this is awkward. Heard of this new guy? He's called the Joker. Uh, I don't know. You guys heard of this guy? He's uh, coming up out of nowhere. He's gonna be a real violent, real violent comedian. <laughs> violent guy and be like, huh, huh? No, I'm uh, busy dealing with Gotham's. Uh, what they have like a big trash problem in that world? Yeah, I think that they like mentioned they have like a real big. They have like a disease going around. They have like trash problem, like no sanitation. They well, have a trash comedian problem, but not ever since the Joker. The Joker's no, not since this Joker showed up, and then yeah, it would be like Bill Burr would have his like thing. Yeah, I, I could see that. I think like in the Joker universe, it's very funny. That means that in this Batman universe, there is a stand-up comedy scene, and these guys are just they've just seen some shit because like that's like probably like ninety percent of Joker villains will cycle through. Like yeah. Arkham's fucking stand up stage. Like I feel like that's what- I I have to say this. I think that Joker, the movie, is set in the UCB classes world. So <laughs> No, go ahead. Why? The UCB extended universe. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it at that. But um, <laughs> yes. Oh my god. The funniest yeah. thing I've seen on the internet this year um was uh uh, shown to me and it was it was a video that someone took during an improv uh show. no it was, it was not improv it was a sketch show um and it was like it was a 30 long minute video vimeo video and it was like it started off and it was like 
in the early like 2000s, me and my friend were like a touring like a sketch troupe, and like we shared the stage with this other thing. We each were supposed to go on for like a 30, 60 minute set or something, like a ridiculously yeah. long set. Yeah. Because these people went on for an hour and a half. This is just the like she's like I filmed, uh, I filmed the entire thing. This is just the portion of it that involves the dance, the dancing that they would do in between the set changes. And it was 60 minutes long. 60 minutes? <laughs> 60 minutes long to That's like true. a whack ass video, like the wackest songs to do for those kind of break, those break dark screen parts where they would just dance on stage uh, and, and switch the, the I respect that. Yeah, I'm not out there doing that. What can I say? I, yeah, I respect that. I mean, that is a Joker universe. Danny, what podcast would you do in this universe? Staircase to Heaven. That will be the name of my podcast. Okay. Next. Really? Just okay. Okay. Yeah, next. I accept it. I'm being punished. This would be a this would be like a this would be like a cleaning podcast, yeah, right? This would be like a productivity cleaning up like podcast. Um, yeah. Like it'd be uh, called spoonful spoonful of Spoonful and of money, like sugar money. Yeah, spoonful so of be, dollars. This would be a sugar daddy podcast. <laughs> and um, isn't that what she is? This is all about how to be an au pair, like how to be a productivity au pair, not tied yeah. down to one family, not tied down to one job. This is how to be like Emily in Paris, but do it for like you know all the families, the Bankses, but make them Bankses, you know, yeah. like all the things. I always I mean, feel like I was a huge uh, Super Nanny fan when Super Nanny was on. I feel like that's I, I, maybe I'm missing it, but I feel like that would be a great podcast. It's just like, yo, my kids are. What terrible. was Super Nanny? Uh, what it was this reality show on like Fox, maybe, but it was basically like this family submits a video, their kids are awful, the parents are like not realizing that it's their fault. And they're like, Super Nanny, please come help. And, you know, Super Nanny was like, super gentle with the kids and just like uh always english which was a big plus because you know she would be like do you know why i put you on the naughty step you're on the naughty step for not listening <laughs> like, Very kids, good. Like, I'm sorry. um real quick and- i want to highlight the amazing comment i know this is going backwards a bit but staircase to heaven hosted by bernie gets is the perfect way to describe the joker movie <laughs> Like that person gets it. Hey, Freya, join my Patreon. You get it. You get it, Freya. Like you understand what's going on here. The Bernie Gets line makes that whole thing A plus. Anyway, go back. Super nanny. Um, yeah, I mean that's basically it. It was very wrong. wholesome, and um, and yeah, I think that either a parenting or more importantly, like I think you've got it right with the cleaning, like productivity. Yeah. With the- okay. And also, like, have a weird thing with a chimney sweep. Like how to like how. To- you know, yeah. like how to fucks with the Burts around the world. Because you know what I like about Bert is like he seems like he's cool with being what he is in her life, like without needing to be more. Like you know that their like their friendship has never like gotten to that toxic place. Like he's just no. like she's in town. When she leaves, he's like, see ya. Like it might be five years, it might be ten. He's just gonna be happy when she shows up again. And like, why can't more people just be like that? No, it's like it's like uh like it's like Christmas sex with your ex. Like, you know, he's just like, yeah, I'll see you next year. Like, we'll be in the same, <laughs> the same area. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah. I think this is good. I think, I think from our point of view though, she would be hosting the podcast. Like, don't you wonder more about her? I didn't see the sequel, but like, is she a ghost? Is she like Beetlejuice? Like, what is she? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think she's more doctor from Dr. Who. Cause she's, she's a different person. Now. Now. Okay, so like I saw the sequel while I was breaking up with my last boyfriend. And it was oh, funny. was it funny? <laughs> well, I like wasn't really paying attention. Like it was a very like amicable. Like we knew it needed to happen. He's a sweet, very talented, amazing, kind guy. But it was still like <laughs> I'm like, am I supposed to be paying attention to this? Uh, but that was me an inherent vice, and it turns out like it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out like it mattered not one whit whether I paid attention to fucking inherent vice or uh, my decaying marriage. Um, like, yeah, I think like it is like I feel like it must be. Is it like so? What was it? So you don't know the deal? Like, what is her deal? Like, is she? What is? I really don't. Covered? I apparently she's just like a magic gal. I respect that, you know. But well, she's regenerated. Like, they aren't like. Do they act like she's the same Mary Poppins? And they'll recognize her in that body. Is it like a Chris? No, uh, like, it's Chris like, thing? and. I think it's still, it's not modern yet, I don't think, so. Oh. 
No, because it's Michael Banks, but he's an adult. The oh, fuck yeah. is. I just remember right. being like, Michael Banks. Super, being adult. Yeah, I just remember being super unimpressed with <laughs> with Lynn. God bless him. Oh. No, you don't give him. You don't give like a five some fucking Alan and like Alan Menken spots or whatever. Drew, come on. That analogy went nowhere. And I'm eating pizza, so we're at that portion of the show. Wait, yeah. is that pizza or potato chips? Pizza. Pizza crushed. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> um, oh, it would absolutely just be like a sex advice podcast. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, it would be, be a sex advice podcast that they're always calling into in this world. Like, it would be like Judd Apatow's sex advice podcast, which is like guys who uh, act like they never fuck, but like in real life, you're like, you would totally fuck like all the time. Look at your charming personality. Don't you know how women work? Like, when um, you talk. Or like a sex advice podcast from the perspective of a virgin. It's just like. <laughs> That could oh, actually yeah. be very oh, interesting, to be that's, honest. With you. That's right, because so much of talk from is this a good podcast? I think it. Um, yeah, so much, it's like an ASMR. Basically, and this is like an ASMR or like or yeah. it's mukbanging. It's just like the way I chew is annoying even to me, so I know that's not right. Um, guys, please like and subscribe to this video. Uh, I do think that that's something interesting there because I feel like so much of sex advice is about learning how to undo the years of like toxicity that like the dating and sex brings into stuff like it's about how to like leave all those hang-ups at the door and like re almost like reform your brain to a virginal place where like you didn't think about things in this horrible way yes but like i feel like if you're i'm more like a detox out sex it's like there's a difference between a virgin giving out like love advice and a virgin oh. giving out sex advice because if you're like oh, i just imagine like in this in this world it would be like a virgin pickup artist like yo you know where i like to hit down with my girl is on the beach like yeah right up there was all sandy and stuff like that you get exfoliated everything he's a sexy dog like yeah like <laughs> yeah so it's like mystery method but like for like yeah you know what i like long walks <laughs> yeah i do i do love that I do love it. It's like I can almost see Danny McBride as this character, like Danny McBride as the virginal pickup artist. Oh, okay. I love touching a girl's clitoris just so many times on the beach. Like it's, it's good. Now, what about the thing called the clitoris? I haven't personally seen it. It might be, you know, a Bigfoot scenario. The topic of today's podcast it's the boobs, the boobies, the boodongos. The... <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, do you want to start this podcast with me? Listen to this podcast. Would you, you want to start this podcast with me? Oh, uh, I would definitely. Yeah. Like, I, okay. I've been a, the reason that I'm still a virgin is I've been waiting for this podcast opportunity. It's just like, I'm, I'm saving myself there. for a, a podcast opportunity. I'm really glad that you said that because I did like, yeah, I, I didn't want to bring it up before you did, but like your, your virgin status is, is part of the whole uh, super Christian thing that you're, you're going on these days, right? Yeah, no, I, yes. I don't know how to describe my super Christian thing other than uh, if you're with me and you're with God, you'll know it. So there you go. <laughs> no, I know how to describe your, your thing. It's the first time we hung out and I got on the camera with you and I was like, oh, you ready for Schmodan? You're like, yeah. Although sometimes, like I'm, I'm watching this and it, it kind of feels like you guys have strayed a little bit from God's light. Yeah, I, yeah. So I just, unfortunately, I, I make a lot of God jokes. Um, I fucking love it. Anyway, respecting religion. He's a great person, you know. Yeah, I believe John gender is non-binary. Very so funny. God. So now it's not even okay to say God's a woman. You have to be like you have. It's a. It's like a day. So now it's like a sentient, you know, God. Everything has to be fixed now. Um, we love you, Beth May says, or I am with you, Beth May, says Cam Shafty. Beth needs to go on SEN Live. I feel like she would fit it right in there. Funny Trevor has never said this about me. Uh, <laughs> no one. <laughs> I think she would really fit into it. I could see you doing SEN. You were in SEN at one point, don't you? Wait, were you? No. Oh, you were. Me? No. I called in. Oh, once. that's what the, oh, the guy, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Next one, by the way. Yeah. What's up? What's What's the next one? Next podcast. Oh my god. Okay. 
uh, this conspiracy podcast, obviously. <laughs> just like a total like, uh, just no, like, bad. Freakazoid, like, so one thing we're regretting uh, to let you all in on the secret that we've been uh, concealing for decades now is that this uh, reality is actually not reality. The reality, yeah. as you know, it is an illusion. It's a it's a myth. It's a wall put up by uh, uh, companies that are trying to keep you slaves to a uh, higher company, which is I God. Love- I like, love that. I love that voice. What is that? Is that Alex Jones tinged with like a with a mood disorder? What is that? <laughs> yeah, it does sound like Alex Jones. Sounds great. I have a little bit different of a take about what this is. This is a this is this is a podcast about uh, that takes place in this alternate reality, right? But it's the Matrix reality, so it's a red pill podcast about being woke because yeah. that okay. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah, yeah. It's about how uh, you know, being woke comes from the same place as red pill. You dumb fucks. And it was created by two trans women. So like, you dumb fucks. Get I together. respect that way. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. Actually, I'm sorry. I have to, I have to, like, like, I have to do that every time. Like every time I, because I dated a red pill guy for a while. I don't know why, because I was really self loathing for two years. I, and I, got I think, like, yeah, I've, I've also done yeah. Yeah, but like, but, I mean, like this guy. I don't just think like he was openly red. Like I never heard the term SJW. I didn't know oh. what it meant until like he started applying it to like me because I didn't hate like uh, Rise of Skywalker or sorry, The Last Jedi. Like because I didn't hate The Last Jedi, like SJW started to get thrown around a lot in the house. Oh, it just turned out like turned out he was a really big fan of Jordan Peterson. Turned out he kind of liked Trump. Uh, right. Like it was turning, it had two years of this and it was awful. But like I got really obsessed with like who these red pill people are. Like I now know like how they think, like how their minds work. And yeah. it's, it's just like I want to fucking shake them. Dude, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's, I mean, like, I, yeah, obviously, I've only dated libertarians, so it's not quite there, but, um, but, Linga, um, but uh, no, like, yeah, that's, to even have, like, an episode of a podcast that would, like, delve into what this movie's version of the red pill is, like, the actual version, it would be, like, super, I think, awesome, you should yeah. do it. I think so, I also just feel any... I always bring this up. Like I was writing a, I did a thing for, I, I write for uh, Rotten Tomatoes, one of their bi-weekly like morning shows that they do called The Catch-Up. And it's like, you know, we make different lists, different movies. And every time The Matrix is brought up, I have to like put it in there somewhere. I'm like, guys, just remember like the term red pill was created by two uh, trans women uh, and refer like uh, at the same place that they were trying to make it equivalent to the term woke. So like you got it wrong. Like you got it wrong. You got it so wrong. Like there's no way in hell you could have gotten it more wrong so like you you could, should just shut up like you should just pick another phrase or just shut up because like it's just showing you how dumb you are yeah, okay yeah. They, and and next one matrix loving fucking the, the things that matrix did for society i just mm. okay well this is my favorite thing of all time uh this would be a cars podcast <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it would be a Cars podcast that where we only talk about the Cars Pixar cinematic universe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. I know somebody to do this podcast. Wait, which one? Who? Ferris, of course. Oh, because he likes Cars, or because he likes because Fast and like No, or because, because he likes in this world, Fast and Furious doesn't exist. He can't do a podcast on like Dom and his gang because like people don't know where they are. It could unless it's like a true crime co- podcast it's keeping up with the Toretto family and like that could work I could see this being like a true crime series that like is like like NPR it's like a or it's like a local news outlet like a Miami Herald is like getting funded with some national money grant money and they're doing like an investigation piece into like all these different agencies and why these like these guys who used to boost DVD um and like CD makers are now international like uh like thief slash like working for the government like this would be a great like 99% or invisibilia you know, episode. Or like car talk. Yeah, or car talk was my first thought, but then you had to make it about Pixar. Girl. I'm so I sorry. never understood the cars. Like, like the how, concept. Like, like, here's the thing. I was looking the other day at um these pictures you can buy that are made by AI. Um, like the, they're AI created. Like you can find them. Like now that I've mentioned it out loud, your Facebook will start uh picking up on it and showing you the algorithm because it's like a space Facebook sponsored thing, and it's like art made by AI. And like all the pictures are just like real weird. And like I showed it to Nerd Chronic, and his first thought, I was like, should we get one of this like this piece of art made by like like an artificial intelligence? And he goes, no, we wouldn't want to encourage them. And I think that was yeah, like, don't want to do their job, you know? Because again. the last thing we need to do is like encourage them into like thinking they can do art, because like that's just that that's like when they start 
turning, I feel like. Like, don't teach them art. Um, but also, uh, my point was, like, they're going to kill us. Of course they're going to kill us. Like, we're, we're, like, we are in control of cars, and they still kill us. Like, we're still in control of the cars, and they still murder us. Yeah. I would like, say, like, if AI down. is trying to get into art, then we're the ones who have to sit them down and ask for a realistic expectation, sweetie. Go to state school, sweetie. Get a job at Burger King, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. No, we're gonna be like, guys, do you really think you can do all the math? Right, exactly. We can start implementing them with their uh so they feel too self-aware. So like yeah. Skynet will be averted when they feel too self-aware. Um what up, King's Portal? Fast and Furious does family <laughs> F relationship advice. It's all about family. Yeah. <laughs> of course it is. Oh, wait, how do I handle this? <laughs> well, it's all about, it's all about it's all about family and Tokyo drifting. <laughs> And then and Turk and Ryan, and he's like, "We hungry." So I guess it's also a food podcast. We hungry. I recently watched all these movies, Beth. Um, if you've never seen a one, which I hadn't up until like a month ago, a couple months ago, um, it starts off really slow. And yeah, like, I've, like, I've only seen, I've only seen, I think, Tokyo Drift, and then the first one. And the oh first no, one okay, so, so boring. Yeah. So okay, Tokyo Drift. Though it's good that you have that in your back pocket. Skip to well, no, you have to go. Uh, we, what you do is you go up to five, right? And these movies just it just takes a turn, like it just becomes a different kind of movie. It stops being about car racing, like they have it a shorthand. In the family. <laughs> what it starts being about family, yeah. Well, it starts being about them doing international, like a set, like heist jobs, like they do, like heists, like they're like, like they're like a squad, they're of muggers, they mug like, people. Yeah. They like they make a crew and they all from the different movies they all join up and now they put like now they can do like James Bond international stunts but they no longer involve any car racing and like that it just makes it a completely better kind of movie and like pretty you know, wild. it's like really good and starting around number five I think five might be my favorite action movie of all time because yeah. it's it's so good number five ha happens what? in what country Drew? happens in Rio de Janeiro it happens in Brazil exactly. Yeah, but it, like I knew that, like I knew that before you said and it. Actually, no, no scene was filmed actually on Brazil. We don't have like a desert here. Okay, well that was definitely your giant like Mother Teresa, like with the arms or not Mother Teresa. It's Jesus. Is yeah. the giant Jesus? That's yes. supposed to be Jesus. That oh, is man. Jesus. Has, like, it's a lot like look like his mom. I guess he the has. The name no is Redeeming Christ for some reason. Why is Christ so big? And is that how big he thinks? He's not. He's he actually he's not that big. It's like the but camera you angle makes. Because he ain't. I, I didn't know he was supposed. To... He he's not that. I, I swear to you, I went there like. He's bigger than you. Ten times my. <laughs> he's on top of you. Oh, he's bigger than six two. That's something. I was such. I have such a weird issue about like whatever I see. I, I'm not even gonna get into this, but I, you know, I I watched Passion of the Christ for like really no reason a few years ago, and I was like, well, why is he hot? Why is he like I, like? I, and then you know, it's just you fail. You've when I was being raised as an Episcopalian, nobody leaned over into my ear and said that the man I was praying to was an absolute stunner. Like nobody was like, by the way, it's fucking Jack. Like, after well, you all know that yeah, Jesus like it. wine. Beth. Like, you know, that's like those nuns are probably like really into this idea of hot Jesus. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, not to, like I'm Jewish. So like, I'm just going to project here and just assume that this is fine with everybody. But I'm assuming like a lot of Catholic women who are nuns or like just old Catholic women at this point who yeah, really, really believe in God, they're, yeah. they're just like married to the idea that they're going to get to see hot Jesus. Like, Okay. Yes, that's what they, that's who they want. They're not. They don't want the baby Jesus. They want like the hot Jesus, like the thirty-three year old stud Jesus. Garth, I love you, but you know I'm not Christian. <laughs> so Fast and Furious vs. Christ comes to the podcast. Yes. Uh, let's see. We got one more of these guys, and yeah, the Streamlabs. I keep forgetting to plug stuff tonight because I'm having such a good time. But Streamlabs is open. Streamlabs.com backslash video. She really you know, likes you, Beth. I do. Like uh, really do. Yeah, duh, Danny, she knows. Uh, you can't even hold that like a secret anymore. Um, but also, guys, after this thing, we have a uh, Zoom like after show, and like uh, Beth is obviously invited. She doesn't have to come, but if like she can, she might be able to. I don't know. I haven't asked her yet. Um, and then everyone else from the Patreon who's like a certain tier member up, you can guys can all come as well. It's not time for plugs. I just thought I'd mention that because we haven't <laughs> taken a break in a while. So I think we're gonna do like two more of these and then call it a night. Um. <laughs> Oh, this God. is 
I feel like you blew your wad a little bit, Beth, about like the conspiracy theory podcast because I feel like that's this world. Like it's like the person off the coast of Brazil being like, they are building fucking dinosaurs out here. Like it's a Glenn Greenwald kind of like. We don't have dinosaurs here, just a little places, not here. But I feel like this is one of those like. Have you ever heard of like fire, like financially independent, retire early? Like this is whole is fine. Fire, like it's like financially independent, retire early or something. But it's like this whole mindset of mostly like dudes who listen to podcasts on Reddit who are like, okay, so I have been Reddit. This is like my my budget, and with this, to be able to retire by the time I'm thirty, and like it, it's just like a weird sort of. So I feel like this podcast would be like dinosaur entrepreneurs of tomorrow, like how to build your own like uh like deadly theme park and then collect the class action lawsuit. Oh yeah. Like just- oh yeah, like, like like the Elon Musk kind of like universe. Like this is like yeah, or not Elon Musk even like Timothy, what's his name from the four hour forty hour work week or four hour work week, whatever. Yeah, like Tim Ferriss. Yeah, Tim Ferriss type of podcast. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. This is literally just uh, on on Anna Ferris is unqualified. <laughs> that's the that's this podcast. Anna Ferris, what the fuck wrong is my husband? Is that what the, what is that her show? Uh, yeah. Anna Ferris is unqualified. Yeah. It, it, really great show. I I'm such a huge fan of hers, and she's like obviously just so so talented. It's so funny. But uh, she's her, really funny. But I always meant like now that I think about it, like I'm like, do I like? Like, which, do I believe she has sound like judgment if she married Chris Pratt, the worst Chris? I mean, they divorced, so she got out of that one. Like, that's you know. fair. Yeah, um, we we're all we all make mistakes. We've all we've all gone there. We've all uh, been married. We've all been married. My Should cat, my cat's right here. She's been married. Oof, yeah, been married, been married a long time, um, but not anymore, right, Teddy? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, it would be. Dear Anna Ferris, how do I leave my jerk ass, dumb ass husband who decided to he's hot now because he gets paid the, the big dinosaur bucks and runs yeah. with heels? It's yeah. a dummy dumb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's just, this is the our relationship thing all over again, except like instead of this guy, we get like somebody being like, help Reddit. My boyfriend is great. He brings me stuff when I'm down. He's part of my church. He's everything else. But he needs to go to Jurassic Park every week or else he has to stand He's trouble. obsessed with training dinosaurs. He's oh, obsessed God. with training dinosaurs. Um, it's it's and like I'd, I'd give the same advice. I'd be like, that guy's probably on the spectrum. Like he's he's like really into dinosaur classifications. He's obsessed with uh like he has a spirit dinosaur uh you know that he represents in his his, his tulpa. He's like a tulpasaur. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, next level. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, this is Tulpasaurus Rex right here. Um, okay, let's go to the last one of these that we have ready tonight. I think we have one more. Ugh, Beth, it has been such a pleasure having you on. Oh, thank you so much. This has been such a great uh, way to spend an evening. You're right? It's amazing. been very interesting, Miss yeah. Beth. Um, sometimes I do this show as video drew, and then sometimes I forget like uh, what she's supposed to be like and do it as me. And then sometimes I'm like, that sh- should be a bigger problem that I should focus on before the show. And I'm the same person. No, I mean, yeah. like, listen, yeah, where where did she end? Where do you begin? Vice versa. No. That's like the mystery. Nowhere. That's yeah. the mystery that you got to keep the audience on its toes. And you've got to get people wondering, mm, what? Where is uh, where is she? How much does she love teeth? And I'm like, like, a lot. Like, the teeth thing is real. Like, I, I've got a tooth tattoo. That is definitely one of my favorite Live in the Dark episodes. I mean, yeah, it's straight up mine too. It's been really good. Really, Peter? Really? really? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so uh, wait, wait. So what do you what do you think is going on here? Because I actually there's this one I could see being like an inner world thing. I also want to go with the conspiracy theory podcast on this one. Like this is also a conspiracy theory uh, podcast, but this is one about like you know how this they about the like, red stick, like red communism stick. on America. Yeah, I, or yeah, maybe it's like Chapo, like El Chapo or something. Maybe it's like a real, like, it's from the Rebellion POV. And it's... Rebellion POV. Oh, it's like um, Trap House or whatever. Um, Let's see. I think it's like Pod Damn America, but like for for the Pod Damn Empire. 
uh, Pod Race America. Pod Race America. There we go. Um, but yeah, wait, if it's not America, because it's like Pod Race, oh, yeah. Pod Race Padawan, Pod Race Empire, Pod Race Galactic. Yeah, I, I think we're on to something. Yeah, that's my friend's something. That's my friend's podcast, Pod Damn America. Great, right, really? Yeah, it's called Pod Ooh. America. It's really good. Um, good. Yeah, I feel like. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, I feel like actually this would be the, like just the straight up religious podcast. <laughs> oh, like, yo, yes. Like, how how do you, the force came into me the other day? I swear to God, I was trying to reach for my lightsaber, and I was like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Like, I'm I'm feeling really alone right now. But then I just mm-hmm. like sort of closed my eyes, and I felt the force come yeah. through me. Yes. Oh God. Yes. 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 Absolutely. This would be like how to channel your inner force, and it would all be done by like like these like fucking galactic influencers yeah. like literally are just like you know like being like yeah you just like it's just really easy like once it's in you like you're just born with it but like you also just like can any living thing can tap into it and like you just got to keep your midichlorian counts like equal like it's about like keeping a healthy clean lifestyle so the force can <laughs> through flu- through or like possibly on you <laughs> girls um the force is like maybelline maybe you're born with it maybe you're maybe Maybe, maybe there's a droid. I think right. I think that that's exactly right. And now I just kind of want to do that podcast too, like the one that's just from the, the yeah people who are just like forced. Yeah, I'm obsessed with true crime podcasts, and I can't believe like we didn't really stumble upon one great. I I. Yeah. Sean, do you have one more picture? Is there one more? Or is that it? Well, there's one more. Let's do this. What? What's weird is like it would be hard. Sean to has a one more. In yeah. which there would be. Or it, it'd be hard to think of a movie. Oh, we which, got it. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Hmm. No, that makes sense. This is like a thirty. This is somebody. This is again. This is like that guy who like from a Miami or like Los Angeles Times. It'd be like Dirty John. Like was broken up into like a serialized podcast. This would be like this thirty six hours or like twenty four hours in L A. Like what happened this one weekend? It would just literally be people discussing Pulp Fictions uh, from different you know journalist perspective yeah, it, it would be i like, feel like this would be about something else that's not in pulp fiction but we're getting the perspective of every scene partners in pulp oh fiction. so you think that maybe um, there's like a meta even meta thing going around here that like jules yeah. accidentally like bumps into somebody at some point and that becomes like a little bit part of the story almost like a like that reminds me of that one um what was it called s town yes i think about s town a lot actually i think about like, s town like every day <laughs> It's just like it's really fucked up. It really, it's really well made, and it just really fucked with me. Like, because um, it's really just about like you think it's gonna be about true crime, but then it's not. It's just about like the human condition, and, and like then it goes back to kind of be about true crime. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's really messed up. I tried to play it for a couple people once, but you can never get into the mood where you play it for like a friend, where you're just like, oh, hey, like let me just put this thing on and see if anybody's just gonna get yeah. down with this. Like the intro is like so slow. It's about making clocks. Like they open up with like a clock making metaphor, and you're like, yeah. Guys, you stay with me. The other day, it was like, um, like that never happens anymore. Where where you get like this ad for a podcast, and it's like it's like from the makers of. Because I remember when S Town came out, it was like a big deal. But when since then has like a podcast come out, like a true crime podcast, and it been like something that other people were really. Like, it's been uh, a little while because I don't think people can do the journalism or the reporting. Like, you know, like it's like everything else is kind of like put to a halt because like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of cold cases, but there's not like you can't go to like a lot of the things you need to do to like uncover a true crime or report on it, which is like actually go places physically and like check things out. Yeah. So I also think probably like, yeah, there probably aren't. I don't know how the podcast b- uh, business is doing. That's up for you to tell me. Um, but I'm not um, really looking at but I like a- I'm going to. No, yeah. okay, so I have a question to pose to the world at large. What is sure. a movie that is not a crime movie, but the universe of this movie itself you would believe is a true crime podcast? I don't know if that makes sense, but like, wait, 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 so what is a movie that is not a crime movie, but that you would believe the universe of has an incredible true crime podcast? Okay, okay, Gun yeah. Girl, definitely. Bug Girl, what's a Bug Girl? Gone Girl. Gone Girl. That is kind Gone. of a true crime thing, though. Yeah, but that's that, that's not the right idea. Um, let me see. I would say like most horror movies. I think a lot of horror movies, because like like in that world, like they're just Thank like, you, like 
they're just like the husband killed the wife or the wife killed the husband and not like the body of a the, the ghost of a japanese girl came and like you know i feel yeah. like there's a lot i'm trying to think of like what else um yeah, that's a movie right there. I've just paid you to do a log line for me because like, or, like oh. I, you've just done one for free, I guess, because like I can, yeah, like uh, a ghost has killed somebody and then somebody's sweeping in to do the, the true crime coverage of the pot of that murder. Yeah, that's a really that good idea. Happened. That's a really, really good idea. Yeah, someone's coming in to do this story about like a man that murdered his wife and then like he's trying to say no, it was a possession. Yeah. Like it was a case of possession or something and then welcome to Dollhouse. Uh -oh. It's a great answer, on the phone. Sorry, guys. No. Things. No, don't do right. it. That boy. Uh, Halloween. No, except no, because they already did that in Halloween. And it was awful. Like in the new Halloween where they had the people that were doing the true crime podcast on Michael Myers and everything they did was so wrong. Like they, they tried to like interview Michael Myers with like a pod, like with like a mic that was like 10 feet away from him. <laughs> <laughs> and it was picking up all only the ambient sounds of the dog barking. Like and, it was, yeah. And it it looks like now how they're doing boom mics with the the basketball players and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. God. Um. Let's see. Uh. Yeah. I think like a lot of horror movies. That's like easy enough. Um. Yeah, that's, that's Ghostbusters. Good. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters has like yeah. yeah. Ghostbusters has a huge true crime element. I think to it. Like there'd be like a lot of crime going on in that world. Um. I'm trying to think, like, maybe, like, maybe even, like, superheroes, like, Marvel stuff, I believe, would go on. Like, David Lynch movies, obviously, there's like, huge, huge true crime stuff. Just nothing gets solved. Like, everything's just, like, in an unmarked folder that does, like, question with an upside down question mark, like you write in Spanish. Like, it's just a problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, one last thing. Searching, that's already a crime movie. The Cube Conspiracy True Crime Podcast. Yeah, if we could find out where where the Cube was held. The Cube is my favorite movie, by the way, guys. Uh, anyone doesn't know. Uh, I would say put some Cronenberg in there. Let's get some Videodrome. Let's get some, like, even Brandon. Videodrome, exactly. yeah. Like, yeah. I think Videodrome encompasses literally any po any podcast. That yes. Super it's me, yes. Yeah, well, it's literally any podcast, but then the idea of the podcast itself being Videodrome. Like, the yeah. podcast itself is the, is the material that makes the next level of crazy. In fact, that's the next idea, Brandon Cronenberg. Uh, big, big idea for Brandon here, trying to live up to his dad's legacy. Nick's your next movie, because Possessor that he just did, it's such a good David Cronenberg movie that was made by his son that like, I want his next one to be about like a podcast that makes you go crazy or like a podcast that like fucks with your brain waves and like does like video drone type things. Cause that's clearly, um, like, he's just updating his dad's concepts into like very cool 21st century ideas. My, a lot of my roommate, or, you know, like two of my roommates work on fiction, audio fiction podcast, which is in and of itself like its own world. And it's very like, it's like this robust community. And if you go in there, you'll find like, all all like really fucking trippy stuff like really well told stories that are just bizarre because it's a weird me medium and i'm i'm always trying to get them to make like a uh uh a, a, like a fiction pod podcast that starts off as like a a true crime podcast where they're interviewing somebody who's like sister disappeared or whatever but then like while they're interviewing him something goes wrong and they like kill the person and then it's like them trying to hide the body or something oh my god so it's like a cohen brother like that's like a cohen brother kind of one. Oh, i like that idea this is great about living in la you can take like any idea that's like already existing as a movie and then you're like but as a podcast <laughs> like <laughs> no i love this i i honestly like want to give you money to make these things so like i don't know if they have like a patreon or something we'll plug that in a second but like i really like that uh nerd chronic uh i think you mean i think you meant james so i can read this because otherwise that doesn't make any sense without know who jake is the twin peaks true crime podcast hosted by uh, james who's so oblivious to everything actually going on in the world absolutely james uh is the character who like literally has never seen anything weird in twin peaks as far as he knows like not the weirdest thing that ever happened was his like girlfriend uh got murdered uh, I'm not going to say anything more because I know that you have not watched it, Beth May. And it might not be for you. It might not. And the fact that I have bought $500 worth of David Lynch merch to planning on reselling on the internet is like a side hustle and not like indicative of any problem in my personality. Of uh, course it's not. It's not. It's not at all. Um, but yeah, this has been really fun. And like, I want to know, Beth, where can people find you? Because like, I want to find you now doing all your stuff. I'm not like an import, um, but you know. Uh, so I'm Beth May. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Hey Beth May. That's Hey, like saying hi, Beth, like my first name, May, like the month. Um, let's see where else. I'm on a podcast called Dungeons and Daddies, which is not a BDSM podcast. Love it. Uh, 
yet. Um, and then let's see. I okay. I just started volunteering at the the Children's Museum of the Treasure Coast, and I do children's stories. There. That was <laughs> so, so good. Um, That's so why you have so good. <laughs> I love kids. I love reading and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah. If you if you go on Facebook, uh, I'll I'll find the link somewhere. But um, yeah, every second Wednesday, I'm reading a story for for the kiddos virtually, and then um, I have a. I have a book coming out next month. Uh, not sure the exact release date yet, but with uh, Sideshow Media, and it's called The Immortal Soul Salvage Jar. <laughs> wow. Um, but um, yeah, I'm super psyched about that. And um, yeah, that's kind of it. And I'll just be around in the internet sphere, and I am excited to be involves i think i think i think the clear thing to take away from this is that like whether or not like anything schmodown is a thing that like combines us all and we all do or we're involved with in some way but like we just all just genuinely also just really like like people sometimes and like you're clearly one of these people that like we just want to hear more from and like want to just like be part of your world because your world seems so cool and awesome and you seem so cool and awesome to hang out with so thank you I've had a really, really awesome time here. I yeah, I this has been great. Thank you so much for having me on. No problem. Danny, where can we find where can we find you, Danny? You can always find me leaving the rooftops of my mistress or at Let's Get Ready Network where we interview Schmodown people, I guess, and do Star Wars and American sports for some reason. And me, I'm Video Drew. Uh whatever. You guys know me, this is my channel. <laughs> Um, come back here on Mondays and Thursdays uh, for the Video Chronic Pop Culture Quiz. Now at 8 p.m., we're doing this Monday, we're doing My Cousin Vinny. So that's tomorrow. We're doing My Cousin Vinny Pop Culture Quiz, my, one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'm going to die doing that. And then Thursday, we're doing Coming to America, which is uh, a patron requested quiz that we are really excited about. Um, and then, yeah, Tuesday's Cinema Bias with Alex Mack back here, 8 p.m. We go over movies and fill in each other's blind spots. And the one we're doing this week is Blazing Saddles with guest Rob Schaefer, who's a friend of the show. So that's awesome. Again, something you can sign up via the Patreon. So, yeah. And then you can sign up to the Patreon to, like, request these things. or some other tiers, like the study sessions we do on Wednesday uh, that Beth has been hanging out with sometimes. I'm chilling on those. Uh, and Sunday's Live in the Dark with Video Drew. And I'm also on Twitch now. So I'm doing a bunch of things. Also, please check out my show, uh, The Ketchup, that I write for, for Rotten Tomatoes. It's like on all their socials. And the show RT Essentials on Peacock, which is another show I'm writing for, for uh, Rotten Tomatoes. So go check out those things. Give them a like. Press all the buttons. It helps, you know, helps keep the bills on. And yeah, Beth, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank so you much very for much. Me. Yeah, awesome. and I will... I will see uh, the rest of y'all hopefully at the at the Zoom. So see you guys soon. Bye.